Biodiversity, the difference between this and this. But how does a forest ecosystem come to be diverse? One way to explain the relationship between organisms and an environment is with a trophic cascade diagram. A trophic cascade diagram shows the flow of energy or total biomass in a particular ecosystem. Primary consumers are the predators, the ones who eat other organisms and constitute the smallest amount of biomass. These are placed atop the diagram. Next step down are the intermediate consumers, the herbivores and the prey of the primary consumers. The bottom of the diagram, with considerably more biomass, are the primary producers, the photosynthetic plants. But besides eating each other, how do these organisms' roles impact each other on a long time scale? One of the most famous studies of the trophic cascade is the case of the gray wolves in the Yellowstone National Park. In the early 1900s, wolf populations were hunted so extensively until the last wolf was killed in Yellowstone National Park in 1926. In the decades following the elimination of the gray wolf, conditions of the park declined drastically. Elk are a main prey of the wolves, and their populations grew tremendously as wolves no longer hunted their young and sick. The absence of wolves was devastating to the primary producers, as the exploding elk populations effectively overgrazed the vital aspen and cottonwood tree species in the park. However, with no wolves to worry about, this terrain was devastated as it became an open buffet for the elk. This destruction of the forest habitat near streams had a ripple-down effect on numerous species that depend on this habitat. Now that we know what the problem is, no apex predator, less diversity in the long run, let's focus on one particular ecosystem within Yellowstone National Park, streams and rivers. Why would the loss of wolves turn a perfectly good forest stream into grassland stream? Vegetation near water sources is thick and dense creating a valuable advantage for predators as they thrive on low visibility. This, of course, is a risky spot for elk who seek the thick vegetation. With no wolves, the elk feel free to prey on the trees in these areas. This grazing of young trees, such as willows and aspens, doesn't allow them to grow tall and establish a canopy, which prevents the development of a larger forest. Without the fear of predation, elk effectively overgraze a stream ecosystem and leave them looking bare and not very diverse. The removal of an apex predator such as the gray wolf in Yellowstone can obviously be catastrophic, especially to forest stand structure. As an end result, you could say that the top predator in a forest virtually determines everything around it in the long term. The success of these few organisms is perhaps the most important aspect in the health of forest ecosystems.